What's going on everybody? Cigar Show Tim here with another edition of Tobacco Talk, where I review a cigar and then I give you my thoughts on it in four key areas. Flavor, draw, construction, and burn. It's everything you want to know about that cigar, but it's from my palate's perspective, and then I rate it as to whether I think it's nub worthy or not. So the cigar for this review, I got just today in my BL Luxuries October box, but I got at PCA when I sat and talked with Eric Bay, talked with him about this, talked with him about his Mr. Fahrenheit, and uh, this is one that I just could not wait to check out. It is produced in the Oveja Negra factory in Nicaragua, and it comes from Black Starline Cigars. It is the Black Starline Cigar Company Rosewood 1923. You can see it right there. Absolutely beautiful cigar. But we're going to do what I've been waiting a long time to do, and that's review it. So there's one thing left to do. <laughs> Let's light it up. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and use my Cigar Medics, the baller cutter to cut the cigar. There you go right there. Throw that over there in the ashtray. Cold draw no time. Interesting, almost like a tart grapefruit with some dark raisin and leather in there. Very, very interesting. All right, well, let's toast her up. All right, upon initial light up, I'm getting notes, a lot of notes of dark oak. Lots of woodiness. A little bit of coffee in there as well, like an espresso, like a, a bitter espresso. And there's a little bit of earthiness that's in there as well. Well, I'm going to smoke it down through the first third. When I come back, I'll let you know about the blend on the cigar and any other information I think you might need to know, like, well, how it's going so far. All right, burn here at the end of the first third. You can see right here, doing pretty well. Pretty straight, just a little bit of a wave to it. It unfortunately did just start to crack right there on the wrapper. So let's go through the blend on this cigar. It features a Mexican San Andreas wrapper, a binder from Ecuador, and the fillers are Nicaraguan and Dominican. So flavor notes in this first third. Well, let me start with saying the strength I'd say is starting right off the bat, a good solid medium strength. The draw is not restrictive. It is very nice, very easy, and the smoke is extremely plentiful. Uh, there, in the flavor notes now, there's definitely a little bit of like a, a white and black pepper mix. Uh, it's mostly white pepper through the retrohale, but you get some black pepper uh, in your mouth, regularly on your palate. And there is a really, really nice savory, like cinnamon baking spice that's in there mixed with that espresso coffee. And there's a hint of a cocoa leather combination that's in there as well. Really, really unique, but really, really good. So this cigar MSRP is for $13.50. And uh, like I mentioned, it came in my BL Luxuries box for the month of October, which is great because then I get to enjoy it twice. So I'm going to jump into the second third. When I come back, I'll let you know how the cigar is performing, any other information that you need to know, and how the flavor has adjusted or changed. All right, let me show you the burn here at the end of the second third. You can see right there, burning almost perfectly straight, just a little wave to it. The ash holds on quite well. It's a little bit flaky, but it holds on really, really nicely, and the split that was in the wrapper totally burned through and fixed itself. So flavor notes here in the second third. Very unique turn in a really good way though. So I've had caramel in different cigars before, you know, notes of caramel and nuttiness and different things like that. There's like a very, very like dark, rich caramel note that's in here. Um, it's almost like molasses and caramel put together. Really, really good. That baking spice cinnamon note is still in there. The coffee is pretty much gone except for a little bit on the retrohale. The pepper note that was in there, that was black pepper on the palate and then white on the retrohale is still there, but it is not as strong. It has calmed down quite a bit. There's a little bit of a tingle on my tongue, but not really like a pepper spice tingle, but just a nice tingle on my tongue. And it's been really, really enjoyable. The draw has been really nice. It got tight for just a couple draws and then it opened right back up again. Strength, I would put this at probably a medium, medium plus overall, but it has been performing very, very well. And that is what it's been like in the second third. When I come back at the end of the cigar, I'll let you know whether I think it's nub worthy or not, and I'll let you know a little bit about how it got its name, Rosewood 1923. All right, let's wrap up this review. Here's the cigar at the end. Ash holds on really well. Got a little bit of a wave to it. Didn't have to correct it. 
but finishing off quite nicely. Okay, Rosewood 1923, where does this cigar get its name? So Eric wanted to pay homage to a movie by John Singleton that came out that um, basically depicts what happened in Levy, Florida in 1923, where there was a massacre of an entire black town by uh, a white mob, to put it quite simply. And so he wanted to pay tribute to all of those lives that were lost um, for, you know, reasons that just don't make sense. But that's the name behind it, or the reason behind the name. Flavor notes in the final third. The strength on this, first off, the strength on this, I would say is probably a medium plus getting into full, but not quite into full. A good solid medium plus in the strength draw has stayed great. Smoke output has just been abundant and really, really nice. But the flavor notes in the final third, did they continue with that like dark molasses caramel note and all that? It unfortunately didn't, but there is a nice minerality note that's in there in the final third. There's still a little bit of that leather that's in there that was there at the beginning that came back, which was really nice. Enjoyed that. The pepper did ramp up a little bit though. It is a noticeable black pepper on the palate. Retrohale has a little bit of spice to it, but not a crazy amount, but there's some spice in there. So if you are not a fan of spice in a cigar at all, this may not be for you, but it is enjoyable. And I really, really liked the final third and how everything just complemented and worked well together. There's a little bit of that oaky woodiness that's in the very, very tail end of the background of the long finish, which is really, really nice. So, Black Star Line, Rosewood 1923, is it nubworthy? Absolutely, this is a nubworthy cigar. If you can get your hands on this, I highly, highly recommend it. Uh, it's, it's, it is one that you've absolutely got to be paying attention to. And Eric doesn't put out bad cigars. He's got some amazing cigars that are out there, and this is one that absolutely continues that. Eric, if you see this, brother, phenomenal job on this. Again, it came out of Fabrica, um, uh, Oveja Negra factory and brain fart for a second. And it comes out of that factory, which is where um, other cigars are made and uh, a black label trading company to be specific. That's the factory that they're made out of and a very, very good cigar. If you've had this before, leave some comments down below. I'd love to know your take on it. Was your experience similar to mine? Was it different? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Put some comments down below if you want to check this out. If you're a fan of Black Star Line, you know, put down what your favorite Black Star Line cigar is. I've had a number of them. I've enjoyed all of them. And this one, again, just goes onto the list. And this is a memorable one for this year. So very, very good cigar. I highly recommend it. But that's going to do it for this edition of Tobacco Talk. Enjoy your cigar journey, everybody. I'm Cigar Show Tim. As always, I'll see you.